Good morning, friends. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me today is the Reverend Dr. Pastor Matt Richard. How are you? Good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you too, my friends. How's uh, how's the school year starting off for you and yours? Ah, uh, it's busy. My wife's actually a teacher, and so all three kids and the wife are all at the same school. We 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 actually live in a small town outside of Minot, so we have about one school building. I mean, it's, it's not one one room, but it's one building, and so all three kids and my wife are all in the same. A school. So it was it last week, my wife sat me down and she just said, you're feeling a little bit sorry for yourself. And and I was, you know, they're all doing their thing and, and all of a sudden getting all their backpacks and new clothes and getting all geared up. And here's me, I'm kind of sat in the corner and, <laughs> and, and uh, sad. And she just said, I, you know, uh, she said, Matt, it's it patting me on the head. It's not about you. Uh, you're feeling sorry for yourself. Uh, you have to be more supportive. And uh, so I had a little bit of repenting to do. Uh, realizing it's not about me so so i'm getting over the uh sorrowful blues of being alone uh they're doing great uh so it's, quieter, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so i can get things done right i get my 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 to-do list done right uh, my days off so anyway it's good yep they're back in the full swing uh it's football season for our small town and that's kind of a fun thing as well sure yeah, my kids are actually just going back to uh, to school for the first time. We started homeschooling in the middle of COVID. And so this is your first year we're sending them back up north in Iowa. Um, and so uh, it, it's been it's been quiet. They've been having fun, real excited about it. But um, it's, it's just it's a different environment. We had them sort of always sort of around for the last two and a half years. And uh, and so, yeah, yeah now we're, we're doing kind of the same thing. We're, we're knocking out more around the house. And uh, it, it's just sort of. It, it, the, the excitement was palpable, but I, I mean, it, it sort of comes with its own little um, anxiety thing too. And, and maybe it's because it's sort of their first year in a new school. Um, but, but there's, there's sort of, and we were talking about this before that the idea that, that, you know, fitting in and, and making sure you're, you're, you know, with um, not just, you know, good people, but just with people, it, it gets divisive out there. Yeah. You know, I, I, my talking with my family and my, my kids, and this is something where I, it, it existed way back when I was in high school too. And I can just remember going to get uh, that real flimsy piece of pizza in the, in the cafeteria and you go through and you have your car and you swipe it uh, with the lunch lady to get, to get your uh, ticket, to get your meal. And then you face and all of a sudden you look at this vast open uh, openness of space. And there's all these tables and you just, I know for me, it was like, I was like petrified and where do I go? And I, I used to play hockey and then I quit. So I didn't belong at that hockey table. And I didn't belong with the basketball table. And I didn't grow up on a farm. So I didn't belong with the farming table. And then I wasn't uh, goth. So I didn't belong on that table. So it's like, which table do you go to? And and our society and school has this way of, and it, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's even intentional, but we form these little cliques, these little groups. And sometimes we can be feel paralyzed. Uh, I know even as adults, but especially as youth, you know, where do I belong? Which group do I belong in? And then you have to spend all this energy trying to get into this group. And then once you're in that group, you have to spend energy to stay in that group and to be accepted. Or then maybe if there's another group that's a little bit better than you want to try to what escape that one to climb to that one as a disaster, it's, 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 it's unending and it's exhausting and all the fear and all that junk that goes with it. It leaves identity always in question and um, even kind of a little bit worse. Like you, you, you've got this thing where you want a better identity than the one that you have. And so you're look, looking to climb up. But at the same time, what does that mean about the people you're leaving? What does that mean about your old identity? Yeah. For all of this uh, energy that's poured into to trying to, to belong, to be knit together to something and have it always sort of in question in the back of your mind, there's no security there. Um, yeah. And so I understand too, why like I, they, they, they had in all the old eighties movies where, you know, the, the, the clicks would sort of get, uh, territorial in a big way um and well i guess you know if your identity is in question the, the way to feel secure is to make sure that you at least know what other people aren't yeah yeah well it, it, it's it's unending it's ruthless and it can shake you to your core i mean it really can and i mean and this is where you know we come to thinking about what we're talking earlier about about what does christ's word say to us and reminded of a passage in uh, galatians where uh, Paul says, there's no longer Jew nor Greek. Uh, there's no longer slave or free. There's no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And for um, our youth, uh, the youth of our churches, uh, to understand that their identity is not in Jew nor Greek, slave or free, male or female. It's not in the hockey click or the basketball click or the football click or the farming click or the computer click. It's not that group of that group. Our identity is what? We're baptized, right? We're marked into Christ. We belong in Christ, uh, that there's no segmentation in Christ's church. 
And that um, even to think about too, I think you mentioned earlier too, we we're talking about this. It's not as if there's different levels of baptism, right? You know, so if I'm baptized by this pastor, I have a little bit more of a baptism or than this person over here, um, or I go to this church. And so I have a, what, a little bit more efficacious baptism than this person who goes to this little tiny church over here. Uh, it's one baptism. There's one Christ. There's one forgiveness. There's one hope and one resurrection. Right. And this is such an important thing that, that you have a firm identity as, as valuable, as loved, as pure and holy, as somebody who belongs, uh, rooted in, in Christ before you start to do any of these other things, because now um, it, it's that much harder to sort of deal with. I, before, at least, you know, back back in the 1900s, when I grew up, uh, you could sort of escape <laughs> this stuff a little bit. You would go home and then you could stop, you know, trying to form an identity and you could just be yourself and sort of gather strength to go and do it the next day. Now, now you carry it around on your phone um, and, and it's everywhere. Um, and so the idea that you'd have sort of a sure identity so that you can you can go and be friends so that you can go and, and exist as somebody who likes hockey or farming or, or whatever else that you do. Uh, but but you don't have to earn a place there anymore, because that's that's sort of what Jesus is saying. He's not saying that there's no more gender anymore. He's saying you're not more or less because of it. The, 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 op, the impetus of it isn't um, male or female, but it's one in Christ Jesus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it, it's, again, it's, it's uh, what I tell my kids and I tell the youth of uh, St. Paul's uh, the beautiful thing is when you have that assurance of Christ, then guess what? You can, you can go and sit at that hockey table and you can love them. And you know what? No, you know, maybe I'm not a hockey player, big deal, but guess what? I'm secure in Christ and I can what love and serve my neighbor, or I can go over to that goth table or I can go to whatever. It, it doesn't matter. I can free freely float amongst the tables because guess what? I'm in Christ, right? I'm baptized in Christ and then appreciate the differences in each other and, and love your neighbor uh, instead of being so self-consumed with. And this is something that uh, again, all of us struggle with being self-consumed with our place and, and uh, lack of assurance, and then trying to earn that assurance and earn that centeredness uh, uh, to feel at peace. Well, no, our peace is in Christ. And when we have peace in Christ, then guess what? We're free to serve our neighbor. We're free to what? Uh, sit at any table we want um, and to be what? Solely secure. And so what? All right. Maybe I'm not the jock, right? Or maybe I'm not the smartest person. Maybe I'm not. doesn't matter. I'm in Christ. So guess what? Um, I can love you in Jesus name and serve you. There. And so it doesn't sort of make these things uh, not matter or go away, but it, it lets you look away from yourself as if you have to yeah. prove it. Yeah. And so then you can actually approach all of these, these hobbies and all of these, these groups as simply what they are. They're groups of people bound together by shared interest and, and love. And that's actually, that's a good thing. Um, that, that's something to lean into, but now I don't need to be the best or, or enough at it, but I can, I can be enough in Christ. And so then I can say, look, I, I love hockey. I, I might not be able to do this for the rest of my life. I might not even be able to start when we play as a, a high school team, but like, I, I'll talk to you about the game. Um, and, and I don't have to feel less than about it. The, the idea that we're always sort of measuring ourself is, is, is a really, really demonic thing. Um, and so if we're going to talk about, you know, the idea of, of clicks, uh, that, that we are knit together in Christ, who is our head, that we are the body of Christ. Christ. It means then that we get to stop sort of jockeying for position inside of it, right? So um, Paul also talks about, you know, if, if the eye should say to the, the hand or the foot, I have no need of you, uh, the body's not going to do real well. And instead, we, we actually get to recognize, so maybe I'm not the part that I wish that I was, but I'm the part that that is still vitally important in his own right, and the part that is loved by Christ so much that he knits it into his own body. It's not like he, he just sort of got handed this uh, this body and, and dealt with it, but he adopted us through baptism and, and made us part of, of his body that the church uh that that he, he looked at at you and said you are worth loving um as a sinner and i'm going to give you your value so that you don't have to earn it now that you have that value i'm going to keep you and shield you mm, absolutely absolutely and it's and again it's it's that that freedom i mean and i think you hit this earlier too it's this idea of always comparing our worth with other people uh boy i mean we're going to be preaching on uh this sunday here with the uh the parable of the tax collector and the pharisee and the pharisees like i think you got i'm not like these other people he's measuring himself with everybody else around him and trying to well okay i'm not like those people i'm above them and and, and i'm sure in the back of his mind he's probably saying well i'm not quite as above you know i'm below this guy over here uh uh below this guy over here uh back and forth but when we compare ourselves to other people it's just this dead end trap of lack of assurance versus what realizing before god almighty that I'm a poor, miserable sinner, but thanks be to God, I'm forgiven, I'm redeemed, I'm adopted in Christ. And therefore, if I'm adopted in Christ, then what can your man say to me? I'm free. 
Free yeah, and, and, and redeemed is a value word, that, that we are purchased in one, not with gold or silver, not with what we can do, but with the holy and precious blood of Christ. And that's where real value comes from. Value is not ever rooted in what you can do. It's only ever rooted in what was paid for you. Like, think about it, the, the whole world, anywhere. Why? Where else do we, we pay for something only based on what it can do? Um, you, you can go to the shoe store and, and you can get the Jordans for, you know, 200 bucks. Some, on the, 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 they pay thousands of dollars for these shoes that don't actually make you any different then. It's just that people are willing to pay for it christ was willing to pay for you in in his in his death like that's that's where we count our value yeah absolutely centered it's it's making the sign of the cross every day right i'm baptized i belong to jesus and because i belong to jesus what i can be a servant of all right that's luther says that in the freedom of the christian right that uh we are free from free from i'm trying to remember exactly how he says we're free from everything but we're servant of all uh yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's beautiful yeah so it's christ christ should go home right <laughs> it's jesus <laughs> period uh, Jesus for our students as they go to the school, remembering, uh, not leaving our baptisms at home, but remembering that we're the baptized when we're in school. Remember, even for us adults too, in the workforce, remember we're among the baptized. And um, that gives us assurance. And instead of what, looking internally, measuring ourselves to other people, all that other kind of stuff, just Christ. Perfect. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Harrison. Good to see you. You too. Bye.